Well, very good evening and a warm welcome to our service. And it's a, a real pleasure tonight to have Reverend Dean Beaton preaching for us. We look forward to Ian's ministry to us. Sorry, I'm getting a, something coming through on the laptop. Somebody's trying to phone me. Uh, just a reminder, Monday Bible study, 2 o'clock. We're on Bible study number 6. Anybody who wants to join us, please just give me a message and I can send the details to you. We've got Road to Recovery at, uh, on Tuesday evening at 7.30 and we have Roddy Cunningham from Scalpe and Harris ministering to us and we look forward to that. Prayer meeting on Wednesday will be myself, God willing. And food bank, as usual, open on Friday and we hope at some point this coming week to make a start on the the Christmas outreach. And next week's Lord's Day service, both of them hopefully will be taken by myself. So, with uh, these notices, I think that's all we have. I can hand you over to Ian to take the service. So, over to Ian. Thank you. Thank you, Alec, for that. <clears throat> uh, we'll be in a service this evening by singing in Psalm 146, and we'll sing from verse 1, <clears throat> and uh, I'll, read out, I'll read one or two verses. Just to, uh, read up the psalm. Praise God, the Lord, praise of my soul. I'll praise God while I live, while I have being to my God in song as I was not in princes, nor man's son, in whom there is no stay. His breath departs to his earth he comes, as the river starts to stay. The heart is the man in Christ, and Jacob's God the way, whose hope upon the Lord the Christ. <coughs> and, and, and so on, great verse mark in the God's praise. Praise God the Lord, praise O my soul. I'll praise God while I live, while I have been to my God in song. I'll praise as give. Trust not in princes, nor man son, in whom there is no stay. His breath departs to self eternal, that day is God's peace. Jacob's God doth aid, whose hope upon the Lord doth rest, and on his God is who made Put to the hungry 
Blessed Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this opportunity of once more and drawing near to yourself, of coming into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We rejoice, O oh Lord, that we come, can come to you, that the way is opened up to us through the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us on Calvary. He took upon himself the sin of the world and died bearing that burden. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. We bow our hearts, we bow our heads, and we bow our hearts in your presence, our very souls in your presence this day and night. And we seek to worship you and to honor you and to glorify your holy name. Grant to each of us, O Lord, in the spirit of worship, we have this desire in our hearts to sing your praises and to honor you and to draw near to you in prayer, even in our own hearts. Grant to each of us, O Lord, that spirit, that we may truly express our love for yourself. May we realize that we are in the presence of the Most High and Holy, that we are in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that we might understand, the Lord, that if, you know, when we are in your presence, we are also where the presence of angels are. And what are the angels doing but veiling their faces and crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. May we realize that our prayers reach into eternity, into the very throne of the universe. And may we in our prayers, O oh Lord, always appreciate who it is that we make our appeals to. Almighty God, as sinners, we acknowledge a complete unworthiness to uh, take your name upon our lips. For you are indeed the holy God of pure eyes and to behold iniquity. But we do come thanking you for the provision of a Savior and a Redeemer in the Lord Jesus Christ, even thine own Son, who, who even at this moment sits at your right hand. The Lord, we plead the blood that was shed on Calvary uh, for our reason uh, to come before you. For he gave his life that we might have life eternal. And we thank you, O Lord, that uh, we are uh, for being able to uh, gather as we do in that precious name like many, many, many more people in this world, even at this precise moment, who are praying also uh, for <clears throat> your presence with them. And the Lord, we thank you that you are a God who is everywhere, a God who is <clears throat> at the call of all who love him and call upon his holy name. And we worship you as a body of your people, we gather in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O Lord, that you are indeed the hearer of prayer and that your ear is ever inclined towards us. We have the confidence of being received by you. And the Savior <clears throat> encourages us to ask, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened up to you. And the Lord, we discover this in the moment of salvation, to realize that what we have asked for, salvation 
now is granted to us. Everlasting life is ours and has been granted to us as well. And the Lord, we have come and we have knocked upon heaven's doors as it were. And you have heard us and you have taken us in. And it, we thank you, Lord God. And we have sought in the past for your blessings and the Lord, we have received them. We have sought the Lord for salvation and it has come, been granted to us. We have prayed for blessings for ourselves and for others. And the oh Lord, we have known answers to prayer. And we remember the elderly, O oh Lord, associated with this congregation. We plead for Nan and for Nora and Katrina and Susan and Isabel Hatch. We think too, O oh Lord, of other elderly folk that we know of who are attached to us who, and the Lord we <clears throat> we would bring them before you as well and pray O Lord for your blessing upon them we think of those who are awaiting medical treatments and we think especially of Chris and uh, and Donalda uh, pray O Lord that you'll be close to them to reassure them in their hearts and minds and your blessing will be there and you will, you will bring them through. We seek protection, O Lord God, for, for individuals from the coronavirus. We think of the many who have been bereft of loved ones as a result of this pandemic. And the Lord, we plead for them, that you will be near to them in these days. And we <clears throat> pray, Father, for those who... Uh, med the medical workers uh, and the leaders who have um, the responsibility of, uh, of ruling the country and deciding uh, on the best uh, procedure uh, to uh, loosen the hold that the virus has upon our nation. We pray, O oh Lord God, for <clears throat> our community and we thank you, oh Heavenly Father, of the people around us and the many th many problems and trials and difficulties that they have, many of them self-inflicted with uh, uh, drugs and with alcohol. Father, we commit them uh, to you and pray that in your grace and in your mercy, you will loosen the hold that such uh, drugs have upon them. We pray, O oh Lord, your blessing upon communities around us here in Lennoxtown and roundabout and wherever we may find ourselves this night. Father, we pray for your outpouring of your spirit. And the Lord, we thank you that we can come to you and seek your blessing too. We pray, Lord God, for the blessing of, um, uh, of the literature that has been already <coughs> uh, circulated in, in Lennoxtown and uh, oh lord we thank you for that and we look forward to another uh, issue of, of uh, <clears throat> literature to the people in, in Lennoxtown and we would ask that you would uh, enable this to go well and that there will lodge rest in the hearts and minds of people and perhaps something that they read there and in the scripture uh, that are being issued with it, uh, that there be these, be your words that will speak to them in their hearts and minds and bring some to realize and to appreciate that there is a God, a God who loves them and a God who cares for them, a God desires their salvation. And the Lord, we, we would thank you, we seek your blessing upon uh, this, uh, <coughs> next issue of uh, literature and the Lord <clears throat> we rejoice the Lord that it is through uh, the reading of your word it is through your word itself uh, that the way is opened up for hard hearts to receive the gospel message and so Lord we bring it all before you we think of the many who face a lost eternity and we plead for them O Lord and ask that in your grace and in your mercy, 
you will touch uh, these hearts. Oh Lord, you have blessed us, oh Lord, with <coughs> uh, making an effect upon the community and with certain folk who have been addicted and caught up with drink and drugs. And, O oh Lord, <coughs> we have been shown to be those who have a power with, in the church, and that power is yourself. And that, O oh Lord, we pray that <coughs> people might yet talk all the more of this little church of ours, that this is where you are to be found, and this is where light and life is found indeed. So, O Lord, we commit all things to you this night. We seek your blessing upon the word preached, and the word read, and upon the praise itself. We pray that we might, you might find all things acceptable, and you would forgive us uh, for any, <coughs> any, uh, any frailties or anything uh, wrong, uh, maybe wrong in the preaching of the word or in our are in our attitude to it. Father, bless us now, we pray. Take away our sins and encourage us and strengthen us, we pray. And uh, help us, O Lord, to honour you and to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. We shall now sing <clears throat> this time in, in our first hymn. And... Um, I don't have a note of that hymn. I'm looking for the words to come up in a moment, but <laughs> I guess it's the hymn. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gates that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Who oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing, through Jesus the Son, the purer and higher and greater will be. How wonder of transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Hmm. A reading this evening is taken from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, and we'll read a portion of that, word, of that chapter. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought him to contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Those who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor you have broken as in the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle, in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, uh, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Lord has sent a word against Jacob and it will fall on Israel. And all the people will know Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria who say in pride and in arrogance of heart, the bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stones the sycamores have been cut down, but we will plant cedars in their place. May the Lord, but the Lord raises the adversaries of resin against him and stirs up his enemies. The Syrians on the coast, uh, in the, on, the, on the east, and the Philistines on the west, devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away and his hand is stretched out still. The people do not turn to him who struck him, struck them, nor inquire of the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. The elder and honored man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies is the tail. For those who guide this people have been leading them astray, and those who are guided by them are swallowed up. Therefore the Lord does not rejoice over their young men, and has no compassion on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is godless and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. For all this his anger has not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burns like a fire, it consumes briars and thorns, <clears throat> it handles the thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. Uh, through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the land is scorched, and the people are like fuel for the fire. No one spares another. They slice meat on the right, but they're still hungry. They devour on the left, but they're not satisfied. Each devours the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh devours Ephraim, and Ephraim devours Manasseh. Together they are against Judah, for all his anger has not turned away and his hand is stretched out still. 
I may enemy the Lord add this blessing to this reading from his holy and precious word, and to his name be the praise and the glory forever. <clears throat> we shall sing now once again, this time in Psalm 66, and verses 1 to 7. O land to God, enjoy full sounds, aloft your voices raise, sing forth the honor of his name, and glorious make his Say unto God, how terrible in all thy works of thou. Through thy great power, thy force to thee shall be constrained to bow. songs they shall sing cheerfully unto thy holy name. Command the words that God hath brought with admiration in working to the sons of men most terrible is he into dry land the sea he turns and they a passage had ye marching through the flood on foot there we in him were glad he ruleth ever by his eyes the nation sees. Oh, let not the rebellious one lift up themselves on high. Let us renew to God in prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Seek his blessing upon the preaching of the word. O Lord, we thank you that we can approach you and bless that, O Lord, which thou hast given to us, your word. And we thank you, O Lord God, for what your word contains. It is uh, the word of life. It is a word of instruction. It is the word of guidance and help and strength in this world, which is a dark world a world that is uh, <clears throat> in which we feel, O oh Lord, uh, the opposition against the Christian message and against Christian faith. Yet, O oh Lord God, nevertheless, we can call upon you, for you are more than, you are greater than uh, those who are in this world and the powers that are in this world. And we thank you, O oh Lord God, that we can uh, seek your blessing, O Lord, that you would keep us from darkness and 
uh, from sin in this world and grant us, O oh Lord, the, uh, the <clears throat> ability to understand and to appreciate what your word contains. We thank you for all that you do for us and we thank you, Lord God, uh, that you have given to us the truth itself. And we pray that you would save us from any, any wrong understanding and any prejudice or superstition uh, uh, that uh, may be existing <clears throat> in, in the, even in our own hearts and in our minds, but that you would clear this, these things from us. Help us, O oh Lord, in everything to honor you and to glorify your holy name and to open up the word so that each of us uh, might, be underst might understand and be uh, blessed and encouraged by it. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> well, Alec he asked me to do a, a sermon that is really approaching uh, the Christmas season. So uh, that's what I have been looking at. And uh, I've decided that since it's a little bit to go to, um, to Christmas itself and to our actual uh, dealing with uh, the, uh, the, the, the birth of the Lord Jesus, that we can look earlier in the, in the um, history uh, and of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have, um, uh, I'm going to read a text now that will uh, give us some understanding of this. And it is uh, from verse 6. Uh, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. That's a wonderful portion of scripture, a beautiful one. And it's, it's poetic, it's, uh, it's a bold statement, it's a wonderful statement in itself. And as we read these things and discover uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ, that this is about the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming into the world. And... Uh, it will be read at many a, many a church service in the weeks to come. And uh, it's one of the early uh, <coughs> prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> and as I say, these words are prophetic. Uh, they refer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into this world of ours. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Uh, I've, I'm just going to deviate slightly at the very beginning here and uh, actually uh, just something I came across uh, in the past week or so and it was a, a, a statement that was pointing to the Quran and they said that the Quran hasn't got a word of prophecy in it. Now that's quite an amazing thing when you think about this is supposed, this is supposed to be a holy book supposed to come from God and so on, but there's not a word of prophecy. You see, God is a prophetic God. God is the one who, who knows the end from the beginning, and God is, a, he tells us things, and he said, I, I God, will carry it through. I will bring it uh, to a conclusion, and he, that's the way that God speaks, and God deals with things, and that's the way we know that there is a God and can be sure of him that he speaks as the God who knows the end from the beginning. And he is the same. And every prophetic word shall come about. And that's why we know indeed that our God is God. There is no other God can do what he does. And indeed, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the Muslim faith doesn't even try uh, to <laughs> have any... Um, any prophecies whatsoever in this work or in this book. And uh, <clears throat> you think of this, uh, this time with 
we're what mind before us just now, now at this moment. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. These are words, tremendous words, and they have just struck home with many people. Even the composer Handel thought so much of them that he produced his unforgettable and ever popular Messiah around these words. These words of prophecy were never fulfilled until the Lord Jesus Christ came. <clears throat> so there was a period here of 750 years before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. And <clears throat> these words of prophecy <clears throat> were fulfilled with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because nobody else matched the description of this verse. And we are told here that unto us a child is born. A child. God sends a child into the world for us to be our Redeemer. A child is set apart for this great task. But what a child. God incarnate. Unto us, says, uh, says Isaiah. Well, I just think on the words of the angel to the shepherds. Unto you is born this day in the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Unto us, says Isaiah, unto you, says the angels. And it was not just to shepherds that the Lord Jesus Christ came. It was not merely to the Jews that he came. It was to all mankind to seek and to save the lost. He came to save sinners of every nation, of every language, of every tribe, of every culture. Whatever our earthly divisions might be, he, he came to us. He was given to us. He was God's plan for you and I. This child is a gift to us. And that's, of course, that rings true with uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the glory of the gospel. It is the gift which makes the gospel. And it is uh, that the, the son is given, a child is given, and that child is Jesus Christ. It is this gift which makes it the gospel. Good news is ours, a message of good news. And that good news is that we do not have to work for our salvation. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And if you really look into these words, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And then you have to work hard, actually, uh, to <clears throat> add sin to bring death to yourself. But the gift of God is eternal life. It is the opening of our eyes, indeed, and the opening of our hearts to see the real truth of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. And realize that this is, this is a gift that is given to us. The gift of life. Eternal life. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is not a thing of effort. It's not thing, something that we've got to work for. But it is indeed this thing that is a gift. And God says it's there. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to beat yourself to death for it. It is yours and yours for the taking. And the Savior said, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And this is the outcome of faith, hope, and trust being placed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Are we burdened? Are we heavy laden? Have we got problems, cares, and trials? I'm sure we have. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that child that is born, was born 2,000 plus years ago, or 2,000 years ago, yes, plus years ago. And uh, <clears throat> we are, all the burdens of all who are, to, uh, who, everyone whose trust is in him goes, uh, their burdens are placed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Our sins, 
no matter how great they are, he will forgive when we repent and confess them, when we're honest about it and we acknowledge that we have sinned against, against God constantly and continually. And if we confess our sins, then he is willing and ready and able to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Now, he is, the prophet Isaiah tells us that his name shall be, shall be wonderful. <clears throat> now, names are very important where God is concerned. When he gives a name, it has a meaning. And there are two, meaning, two names that are given to the Son of God. One is Emmanuel, and the other is Jesus. Both names are given before his birth, and both have meanings. In some places in the world, they do not believe that a child is a soul until it has been given a name. And the, the Eskimos, apparently, uh, that's the way they, th they, they think. I don't know if they still think that way, but that's the way they think. They were thinking in the past. You have to give a child a name uh, for it to really live. And the name Emmanuel is, is a, prophet, a prophetic name. It was given about 750 years before the Savior's birth. And it is mentioned in chapter 7, uh, 14 of Isaiah. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's his first mention. And this name Emmanuel is a beautiful one. <clears throat> it means God with us. <clears throat> it was an, an assurance that God would always be with his people, never to desert them. It was an assurance that, too, that God would come and be part of the human race. God with us. In other words, God incarnate. God as, as, as the as the hymn says, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see Christ, the incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel, God with us. And his name spoke hope to the people, a hope that was sure and steadfast because it was <clears throat> grounded on the promises of God. God with us, the promise of God's presence. Now that's a wonderful thing indeed, to have God's presence promised to you. God with us, God with you and I. For most people, life is just too busy, too full of care to think of God. And we, you know, God never comes into their thoughts. We can be like that. <clears throat> we are busy with this and that and the next thing. We are taken up with the, with the toys of this world, well, with all our possessions and so on. Uh, we've got our TV sets. We've got all the electronic uh, bits and pieces and so on that take up our time and so on. And yet God says, am I a God at hand and not afar off? I fill the heaven and the earth, he says. He is near to all who call upon him. Have you called upon him? Or have you taken him for granted? <clears throat> his name shall be called Wonderful, we read. And wonderful it is. It is Emmanuel, God with us. To know that God is close to us is a comfort to the believer. That he is so close and we are told he is closer to us even than breathing itself. To know that God is close, what a comfort indeed. And the second name, Jesus, was the name given to Joseph by the angel Gabriel. And that name is a wonderful name uh, as well, because for here too, we have the realization of the hope of 750 years. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, but he shall save his people uh, from their sins. And here we have the meaning of his name, a savior of his people. Unto us a child is born. <clears throat> Emmanuel, the son of the virgin, has come in the flesh. 
<clears throat> God and man limited or united rather in one person. God seemingly limiting himself in the Lord Jesus in the body, but he's not. He is infinite and yet he is finite. He is eternal God and yet really man. Heaven and earth are united. Time and eternity meet in the one who is both creator and creature. We look upon the babe and we see the mighty God in a feeble child born. This is a wonder indeed. We can believe it and yet not comprehend it. His love also is wonderful. He loves the unloving and the unlovely. And there is no reason why he should love us, but plenty of reasons why he should not love us. Yet to love us, he does. For you and I, he gave up heaven's glories and became poor. And he was hated, persecuted, punished, put to death. Wonderful indeed is our Emmanuel, our Jesus. The name Jesus is prophetic. He shall save his people from their sins. He came to save sinners and he has done so. He is doing so. Even at this very moment, he is saving sinners. And he will continue to do so until the end of the world. So the question is, has our Emmanuel saved you? We have all sinned and we are all in need of being saved. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> what must I do to be saved is the question that some ask. Those who are convicted within their own souls and their own, <clears throat> and their own minds. What must I do to be saved? And that's the best question you could possibly ask. And the answer is, indeed, the command is, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is, believe that he is, that he is the Lord of all, that he is the Lord Emmanuel, that he is the Jesus of Scripture. He is the Lord of all. He has died upon the cross for you and for your sins. That burden he bore upon the cross, your sins, my sins, the sin of the world was there. And we are asked indeed to believe all the good news concerning him. Confess your sins to him. Confess your need of him. Surrender all to him and you add <coughs> and you will be saved. Our Jesus will save. His, uh, our Emmanuel will be with you indeed. So <clears throat> have we come to the understand that and to appreciate this man, this God, our Savior, our Redeemer? Have we thanked God for Jesus? And we thanked him uh, for bringing that truth uh, to us. But you know, God would like a gift in return. God would like the gift of our love, the gift of our hearts. He wants them given to him. And are we ready to give all to him? Our life, our all to, the, to our God. You know, on Christmas morning, there's this exchange of presents. Now, all those gifts, all the wrapping papers, and the colorful mess about the floor. And there's chaos for a few days. <clears throat> and I hope you will get good presents and gifts, and we will be able to say thank you for them. There is this one great gift that God has given us. He has actually given us very many gifts, life, home, loving parents, uh, loving friends, loving family, health and strength, food and warmth, clothing and shelter. There are so many things that he has given us as good gifts and we can take them so much for granted. But what is the one great gift that he has given us? It's Jesus. He came into the world to save us. Why? 
because there is something wrong with this world. It is steeped in sin. <clears throat> there is something wrong with each and every one of us, and that is sin. Jesus came into the world to save sinners and to give an, us another gift. His gift of eternal life comes uh, through his death upon the cross. He gives himself for you and I. And <clears throat> he looks for a response in the heart of each of us. Have we seen our need of Jesus? Are we just bypassing him and forgetting about him? Heard the story so often, well, it doesn't really mean anything. It's a bit of a myth, a bit of a story, nice in, in itself. But then, but then you see, <clears throat> you will be judged by this story, what you heard and how you responded to it. You will be judged if you have just shrugged your shoulders and walked away from it if you have given it little attention or no attention. But then if you have given it all your attention, and you said, this man really did die for me, he really did give himself for me. This man took upon me, took upon himself my sins. I believe that. I believe that he is God's great gift for me and for the rest of the world. I believe in this truly believe, then you will find that God is working in your life and God will touch your soul. God will come and dwell in your heart and you will have the gift of the Holy Spirit. This one, this great, great gift that God has given us is this Jesus, our Emmanuel. May God bless to you these words and God bless to each of us these words and the message of this text this night. I pray that indeed that the will lodge rest and remain with each and with every one of us and that we will, <clears throat> as we <clears throat> meditate upon these things and the approach of Christmas itself, we'll learn to understand and to appreciate why so much is being made of the Lord Jesus Christ, but that we will separate what has been done on Calvary and separate everything uh, from <clears throat> what the world thinks and that the Lord God we may through the Lord God working in us we may have our eyes open to see and to understand and to appreciate the way of salvation in Jesus Amen the Lord bless each of us now let us pray Lord God, we thank you that, <clears throat> uh, that you have come into this world as a saviour and as a redeemer, that you are our God in veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, Jesus, Jesus himself. And we thank you, O Lord, that we indeed <clears throat> are here and we are sitting under the sound of your word. And something has drawn us to be in your presence. Something has drawn us and we have not yet opened the heart to Jesus. Oh Lord, may we do so. Touch our hearts, Lord. Melt them, melt the hardness of them and grant us a heart of flesh rather than a heart of stone. Bless us this day and bless us this evening. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> we shall rest in him. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son, 
to make a wretch's treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turned his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. Why should I came from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Let us be clear. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you and with those whom you love. Thank God. Now and forever.